Mr. Shalom, Most High Christ, bless him, Officer George with TTIC. Before we get uh, started in this class today, I'd like to read our TTIC disclaimer. TTIC, also known as the Truth of Christ, is a Bible-based organization. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. We teach the Bible as it is written. We are not a hate group, nor do we teach hate or violence. We do not condone any acts of hate, violence against any race, ethnicity, gender, and religious group. We firmly believe in abiding by the laws of the city and state. If you witness any member of TTIC committing a crime, please contact us in the proper authorities. Thank you. All right, our praises. Most high Christ bless. How y'all brothers and sisters doing out there today? Uh, uh, Most high Christ bless y'all. And how y'all brothers and sisters doing in here? Most high Christ bless y'all. Uh, I hope all is well with our brothers and sisters out here uh, today or any other day. The reason why is because times is hard. All right? Times is hard. And that's why today's class should be a treat for a lot of y'all. Today's class is who plays with broken toys. Uh, in parentheses, emotions. All right? Who play with broken toys? In parentheses, emotions. Emotions, all right? So, with that being said, we're going to get started off. Give me Psalms chapter 101 and 7. Psalms 101 and 7. The book of Psalms chapter 101 and verse 7. <laughs> he that work of deceit shall not dwell within my house. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Say it again. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell in my house. So God said, a man that worketh deceit shall not dwell in his house. Now, that's, that's heavy scripture right there. Hold on. Let me get over it with you. Let me get over it with you because I'll make sure I don't want to add something to it. Uh, start with verse Let's start with verse four. Psalms 101 and verse four. Mm -hmm. A fraud heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. You see that a forward, and that forward means perverse. A perverse heart, so a perverse man shall depart from me. Y'all see that, right? Mm -hmm. What says the same thing? It's a scripture that me and you like. Says the same thing. Wisdom of Solomon. Get that for me. You know what I want. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. One. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one and verse five. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one, verse five. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. It will flee what? Will flee deceit. See, the Holy Spirit of discipline will de de uh, will, will flee what? Will flee deceit. Read. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. To remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And will not abide when un unrighteousness cometh in. Okay, so that's heavy right there. So now let's go back and see the Psalms 101 says the same thing. Psalms 101 and verse 4. A forward heart. A perverse man shall depart from me. Shall depart from me. Read. I will not know a wicked person. I would not know a wicked person. That's heavy, guys, because you know a lot of us try to squeeze people in. We try to squeeze people in, or we try yeah, to yeah. we try to uh, uh, entertain other folks that is not of this thing, right? Here. And God says, "A forward heart, a, a perverse man, shall depart from me." Guys, let me give y'all some let me give y'all some knowledge out here on this. Do what God says, do, and obey what God says, because He says. I would not know a wicked person. So when you do that thing and you, you keep trying God, you're going to make him not know you. Watch the next verse. Come on. Verse 5. 
who so privily slandereth his neighbor. So you privately, that word privately means privately slander your neighbor. Him will I cut off. Mm. You see that? God said, him will I cut off. Watch this. Him that have a high look. He that have a high look, and that, that's a proud look. And a proud heart. And a proud man. Will not I suffer. I will not suffer him. What it, what it means that you got that proud, proud look. You know that look, everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you got so you got that prideful man. I ain't listening to that brother. He ain't talking about nothing. No. I ain't got to no. listen to that brother. You see that? God says what? Read that again. Read the end of it. Verse of uh, him in, in the verse five. Him that have a high look mm. and a proud heart. Read. Will not I suffer? I will not. I'm not gonna suffer you. I thought God said he's going to own suffer. But, but in certain situations, God said, I'm not going to deal with you. Gonna deal with I'm you not going to deal with you. Watch this read. Verse 6. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. So God said, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. Read. That they may dwell with me. Hold on. So his eyes. Now watch this real quick. Oh. Hold that. Give me Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3 or 1. I want, I want the one where it says God's ass is everywhere. It's either three or one. One or three. Three. Verse three. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are every place. Read. Beholding the evil and the good. So now let's go back. Let's go back. Read that again. It says, that whoso privily slanders. No, no, verse no, six. Verse six, I'm sorry. My eyes shall be upon the faithful. My eyes shall be upon the faithful. But he's going to see the evil too, guys. <laughs> he's going to see the evil. That's why I went to Proverbs 15 mm -hmm. and 3. He's going to see the evil, but he said his eyes, meaning he's going to be looking out for the what? The faithful. faithful. Who's the faithful? You men and you women that's keeping God's laws. He's going to be looking out for y'all. You men and you women who's keeping God's laws, he's going to be looking out for y'all, read. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. Uh, that they may dwell with me. Come on. He that walketh in a perfect way. He that walketh in a perfect way. He shall serve me. He shall. Hold up. Hold up. It's, give me Matthew 15, 48. Because these Christians got life messed up. So do some of these Israelites out here with that mindset of, I can't do it. I can't be perfect. Right. But watch what Christ said. Let's see that Christ said anything any different than David did. Watch it. So, uh, 5 and 48? 5 and 48. Five Come and on. 48. So okay. So then, yeah. <laughs> there you go. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, 48. Be ye therefore perfect. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. See, nothing changed from the Old Testament to the what? To the New. Let's go back. Let's go back and see what King David said. It says, uh, he did. What's my place? It's verse seven. seven. He that work the deceit shall not dwell within my house. Read. He did he did tell the lies shall not tarry in my no, house. No, there's verse six. I'm sorry. We in the wrong one. Verse six. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. That they may dwell with me. Read. He that walketh in a perfect way. That's why Christ said, did you do perfect? As your father in heaven, he that walketh walk in a perfect way. He shall serve you. He shall serve you. That's why the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Are chosen. Because the one, the ones that's going to be chosen are the ones that's going to walk in the perfect way. He shall serve me. That's who's going to serve God. Right. The ones who's walking in this perfect way. Verse 7. Come on. Verse 7. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. And now, hold on. What did he say? He that worketh deceit. He that worketh deceit. Shall not dwell within my house. Mm, 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 read. He that telleth lies. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Shall not continue in my sight. So I'm gonna tell y'all, brothers and sisters, something. If you're not hearing what God saying, God said, if you lie, mm -hmm. you're not gonna dwell in my what sight. Give me uh, because I'm just precepting these with new and old. But if it's any Christians that jump on here, because they say, oh, that's done away with. Let's go to the last book of the Bible. Let's go to the second last book of the Bible, verse 8. 
The last, second to the last book of the Bible, verse 8. So the book of Jim. No, no, the second, I'm sorry, no, the last, um, last chapter, chapter of the Bible. Revelation. Yeah, Rev, you know, yep, yep. Verse 8. Book of Revelations, chapter 22 and verse 21. 21. Second to the last. Okay. Uh huh. B. I mean, but the fearful and the unbelieving. But the fearful and the unbelieving. And the and the un abominable. And the abominable. And murderers. And murderers. And hormongers. And hormongers. And sorcerers. And sorcerers. Idolaters. Idolaters. And all liars. And all what? All liars. And all liars shall have their part in late which burneth with fire and brimstone. See, guys, we gotta realize something. This is real. This is real. Somebody keep on telling you, you hear these pastors lying to our people. Oh, man, what's in the Old Testament? That ain't going to what happened in the New Testament. Right. But he said right here in the Old Testament, he the word the seat shall not dwell within my house. He did tell of lies should not tarry in my sight. Meaning you cannot get in the kingdom of heaven. Right. You're going to get thrown in that lake of what? Lake of fire. It's going to be the second what? The second, second death. death. The first death is you living here on this earth. That's the first death. You living without God's commandments mm -hmm. on this earth or sinning against God, you're already dead. You're a walking dead what? Walking dead man. That's why they call us the walking dead because you're a walking dead man right. and you sin while you're here. That's why God says when on uh, Second Ezra, when it says they loathed my law, meaning that they, they tossed God's laws behind their back. They were sinning against God. Why they had liberty, why they had freedom to what? To repent. That's right. This is your freedom, guys. This is your freedom to repent. This is your time to get yourself together right here. This is your time to shine right here. Hey, let me tell you something. If you, I, I sorted out my little workout thing. And I know there's one thing I holler to myself when I'm working out. It's an old saying. No pain. No gain. No gain. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all out here, let me tell y'all something. If you don't have pain in doing this work, you ain't gonna have no gain. If you think everything is about just sitting back, I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna relax. And it's, God's gonna save me, you're a liar. You're a liar. God's not gonna save you. You gotta put in the work to get saved. You got to. Mm -hmm. It's no if ands about it. Christ had to put in what? What did Christ say? Give me that in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. What did Christ say? Let them not. The, what did he say? No, when, he, when his parents came and got him. Uh, must be done my father's business. I must, let's get that. Let's get that. You see that? That's what Christ said. Christ said, you got to, I, you must be about your father's business. Come on. So it's the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 49. Three. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? How is it that you sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Don't you know that we, I'm, I'm, don't you know that I'm about my father's business where wist me no? Don't you not that I'm about my father's business? And that's what we gotta be about. We must be about God's business. Don't let no damn Christian tell you that you can go to church on Sunday, you can go home and eat some pork chop, and Christ go save you. And don't, Christ, go ahead. And don't do nothing else the rest and of the week. And don't do nothing else the rest of the week. Christ, did Christ eat pork chops? No. It's not a strip. He put the he put the demons into the pork. Why would he put demon into good food and pork was good? Mm -hmm. Why would he put the why would he put the demons? Why would he cast the demons out of that man's body and put them in the food where everybody so you, now you had one sinner, now you got a million sinners right. that don't make sense. You your brothers and sisters. That's showing you that the dietary law is still in what? Effect. That's crazy too. It shows you uh it, that's, I always wonder why would he put it into the mm -hmm. pigs and ain't nobody gonna touch it either anyway. So there you go. Just be there. there you it's go. Like, nah, just let us out into the yes, yeah. into the port because the port he they everybody that's outside the laws was eating what port in the port. They eat port so we can enter into other what other people. That's what it goes. That's the reason why they did it because they they figured they were slick. But you gotta remember. Christ said, ha ha, 
Can I say it? Let's read that real quick. Cause you, you got me out there. I gotta go to it. Give me one fan. Give me one fan. Let's go to it real quick. Because you just made me think of something. Now watch this. I'm gonna explain this real quick. Give me Mark 5 and start with, let's get right to the point, verse 8. Book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 8. Uh-huh. For, for he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Three. And he asked him, what is thy name? Three. And he answered, saying, my name is Legion. My name is Legion. Legion means devil. I'm, I, my name is devil. And that's what? For we are many. For they, we are many. It's many devils. It's many demons. That's what the legions is, demons. They devils. Read. Watch this. And he besought him much that he would not send them out of, away out of the country. Read. Watch this. Now there was there nigh unto the mountain. Now there was nigh unto the mountain. There was close. They were nigh me near. Close to the mountain. A great herd of swine feed. Read. Watch this. And all the devils besought him saying. All the devils besought him saying what? Send us. Into the swine. Read. That we may enter into them. Stop. Send us to the swine. That we may enter into them. Who they want to enter into? The swine or the them that's eating the swine? The rest of the people that's eating them. You see that? Enter, so we can enter into them. All right. So it's, and they said it right off the screen. Read it again, Father. Watch this. In verse 12. And all the devils be solid. And all the devils be solid. I mean, they, all the demons be solid. Watch this. Saying. Saying what? Send us into the swine. Send us into the pigs. That we may enter into the them. So we can enter into them. Them is the people. Them is the people. Watch how, I did, how we know it's the people. Watch the next verse, y'all. Read. Here it goes. Verse 13. And, with, and for with Jesus gave them leave. And, what, and read it again. And for with. Jesus gave them leave. He gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out. Read. And enter into the swine. So God, Christ gave them exactly what they wanted. But watch this. Watch the next verse in that colon right there. Watch that colon. And it's going to explain the next verse. And the herd ran violently. And they ran violently. Down a steep place into the sea. Into the what? In the, in, down a steep place into the sea. Read. They were about 2,000. Read. And were choked in the sea. They was what? And choked in the sea. Read. And they that fed the swine fled. Read. And towed it into the city. Read. And in the country. And they went out to see what it was so stop, that was done. Stop right there. I wanted to verse 13. Read that at the bottom again. And the herd ran violently. And verse 13, uh, start right there. And the the herd, herd ran violently down a steep place read. into the sea. Into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. See, Christ perceived their wickedness. They wanted to, the demons wanted to go into the pigs so they could so they could enter back into the people. But what did Christ do? He choked all the pigs that had the legions in them. So they was not able to enter back into those what? Back into the people. See that? So it was 2,000 unclean spirits, right? That's, that's just what it says, 2,000 pigs right there. Okay. So don't get, don't get me to ask you how many spirits was, I don't know. But that one man had a, and that one man had a lot of demons yeah. on him. And they was trying to get back to the people. They was trying to get back to the people. You come out of one body, you want to go to a what? Yeah. That, that's Matthew's, uh, what is it, 13? Uh, Matthew's 13, where it says, if, if your house is uh, clean. I am clean. Yes. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, you remember he said he found dry place and nowhere to go, so he went back yeah. to where he came before. Right. By that, by that man being by Christ cleaning that man up, they could not enter back what yeah. into him. Right. So they wanted to enter into some more, some different way. Yeah. Uh, there you go. I'll pray. All right. So, all right. So we got that right. So now read one hundred one and seven again. The book of Psalms, chapter one hundred one and seven. That wasn't part of my class. That was just, I was just, that was a sad day right there. But let's go back because let's get back on point. Come on. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. Come on. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. So he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. So you should not be established in God's sight. So watch this. Give me the definition. Here we go. Give me the definition 
Uh, we're going to Miriam and Wrestler the definition of lie, and we're going to read uh, verb two. I believe, I believe it is. No. Hold on. Yeah, verb two, and now let me go up to now one. Let me go up now on one. A little bit more. Give me one second. I'm coming. All right, now one and give me one second. Now one and two. Read them. Definition of lie. Says the position or situation in which something lies. In which something lies. Alright, something lies. So watch this. With something like uh verb two. I mean lie. Uh, no, that's what I meant. Hold on real quick. Hold on. I might get them on here the wrong one. That's what I want. Read that. Now, um, read that right there. Now, now this is live one, live now two. That's the one I wanted right here. Okay. The, the, the definition is an assertion of something known or believed by the speaker or writer to be untrue. To be untrue? With intent to deceive. See, so you know something is untrue with the intent to deceive. That's a lie, right? Now watch this. Let's go up to verb. Let's go up to verb. Lie. Lab, verb two, and verse and one. To, to make an untrue statement with intent to deceive. With, to make a what? Make an untrue statement with intent to deceive. So, you know, a lie is to make an untrue statement with the intent to deceive. So, if we lie to our brothers, we're, we're trying to deceive you. We're trying to throw you what? Off from the what? From the truth. From the truth. All right, everybody got that, right? All right, from her, give me Proverbs chapter 13, verse 5. Watch this. With that being said, let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 5. Watch this. Book Proverbs chapter 13, verse 5. A righteous man hateth lying. A, a what? A righteous man hateth lying. A righteous man hateth lying. But a wicked man is loathsome. And cometh to shame. And cometh to shame. So a wicked man is loathsome lo and cometh to shame. Because you are, you're going to see that man's what? You're going to see his oh, lies. Gosh. So he's going to make him become shameful. Give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Read. Verse 17. I mean, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Thou should not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So everybody understand when you lying, it's also bearing false way. False witness. False witness. Give me, give me Psalm chapter 35, verse 11, please. Psalm chapter 35, verse 11. So when you lying, you bearing false witness. Watch this. Psalm chapter 35. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Stop. Because when somebody lied on you, they tell on you things that they knew not. That also goes into what? Slandering. Mm -hmm. And also going to slandering a brother, right? Read. Watch this. The next one. Verse 12. They rewarded me with they rewarded me evil for good. They reward they rewarded me evil for good. And because they lied on me, they rewarded me evil for good. The good I did to them, they rewarded me evil by slandering my name. Read. To the spoiling of my soul. To the spoiling to the ruining of my mind. So people would like you to what? People would like you to what? People would like you to what? Tell the truth. No. People would like you to the uh, uh to ruin you. Meaning they want you to fall what? They want, yeah. They want you to fall. I said, 
Yeah, they want you to fall down. People will ruin you, they want you to fall down. Because they, that's where the slandering come in at. Because ruin, well, like, yep, it's like spoil and destroy. They want you to destroy the, the, your, your uh, um, but when you slander somebody, you, you're, uh, what is it? Uh, good name. Uh, good name. Yeah, good name. Right. Good name. Yeah, but that, yeah. right. Read that again. Verse uh, 12. It says, they rewarded me evil for good. They rewarded me evil for good. Watch this. To the spoiling. To the ruining. Of my soul. Of your mind. Because sometimes when people when people do bad to you, they hoping that that will make you fall off. That that they hoping that that'll get you where your mindset is not or uh, uh, focus on God. When your mindset not focus on God, now you are going off. You doing different what? Yeah. That's why you. That's why the Bible says, "Be ye angry and sin not, and don't let the sun come down upon the uh, the wrath." The reason why God said that is because the more and more that you angry at somebody, the more you let you let wickedness, you allow the wickedness to seek into your mind. Now you with that wickedness seeking in your mind, that become what become behind that is hatred. Once that hatred seek in your mind, what happens? Sin. Sin. Because now you will do anything to your neighbor. Yeah. To what? To get revenge. So it'll make you feel better at the end. But everybody got to remember, give me Romans real quick. I just want to touch on this. Give me Romans chapter 12. I got I to gotta touch on this just, just a quick one. Romans chapter 12. And I want to start with 20. Watch this. Book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 20. Now, and, and now, this is what brothers and sisters, I don't think brothers and sisters they don't really learn this when they, even when they cure, or even when they at other organizations as a, uh, as our bro, as our big brothers. I don't think they really learn this thing right here because everybody want to avenge, revenge their self. Watch this. Read in the verse 19. Watch this. The dearly beloved. Avenge not yourself. Don't avenge yourself. Watch this. But rather give place unto wrath. No, but rather give place unto God. Read. For it is written. For it is written. Vengeance is mine. See, God is letting us know that vengeance is his. Go ahead. I will repay, says the Lord. God says, I will. So if a brother do you wrong or a sister do you wrong, then God says he's going to repay a lot of y'all don't believe in it. Because y'all don't believe in God. So you ain't got to do nothing. You ain't got to do nothing. But what's the next point? This is a very important. Watch this read. Verse 20. Therefore, if, my, if, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. That's talking about an Israelite brother and sister who's keeping the laws. And, and, and y'all got y'all got beef. And then, you know, he, be, he became your enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, because you exposed him or exposed her. So he said, if they hungry, hey, man, give him some food. Read if he thirsts, give him drink. Hey, if that man's thirsty, give him some drink. Read. For in so doing, for doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And thou shalt heap what? Thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And so you should heap coals of fire on his head. Meaning what? Because evidently he got a problem with you, right? So if he hates you and you do good to him, God's gonna pay who back? He's gonna pay you back. See that? See, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna recompense you. For right. So, so he, no, no. If God, if if I'm doing good to you and yeah. you hate me, and I hate you, who, who's God? God's gonna pay me back for doing good, but God's gonna pay you back for doing what? Doing wrong. There you go. That's what I. That's what I was yeah. trying to explain. There we go. All right. So God's gonna pay you back for doing evil because the reason why is I can't touch you. I can't fight you. The Bible says turn the other way. No, turn the other cheek. And so, but watch this. Read the next part. Come on. 21. 
Be not overcome of evil. Do not overcome of evil. A lot of people uh, misunderstand this part. It says, be not overcome of evil. Read. But overcome evil with good. But you're supposed to overcome evil with good. That's why if a brother is hungry or he, he, you know, he's mad at you, he's hungry, he needs some money, here, bro, here goes some money, you know what I mean? Because you overcome evil, guys, with good. Right. See, in today's world, they, they, they call that weak. They call it you, know, you being weak or something. Yeah. It's the, verse, the exact opposite. Right. Of what you're trying to do. Right. That's why you remember when Christ, when Christ, uh, uh, when Christ, uh, what was that verse saying? Oh, when Christ was really died, and he said, he said, hey, man, he said, don't you know I could call for 12 legions of angels? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, hey, bro. I got to do this. I got to die. That's why things got to happen, guys. Hey, hey, things got to happen. A brother, a brother got a, a brother or sister, a sister got to allow her husband to cheat. You can't stop him. For, you can't stop him for cheating. Why? Because that, that must be in his, that must be in his desire. So you got to let him fulfill his desire so he can get what his righteous reward from God is, which is what? Death. Same thing with a woman. You gotta let her cheat. You can't. Don't try to. Don't don't try to couple. <laughs> don't, don't try to couple. Don't try to couple. <laughs> right. Don't, right. Don't try to couple because you know what? Because the reason why is her righteous judgment is what? Death. Yeah. Yeah. See it? Wow. Yeah. Everybody yeah. gotta understand, man. Hey, man. When we see brothers and sisters come in and out of this troop, brothers and sisters leave here, we not we don't frat. The word frat means worry. We don't worry. Mm -hmm. The reason why we don't worry is because it's it's more horrible for them on the outside of the learning that they was getting in here. It's it's way they miserable. They not getting what they they getting what they wanted to do. They getting their lust. They getting everything that they but guess what? When that lust ends, what happens? Misery. No. But what else? Death. Right. After night. You, you looking for the death, right? right. You see what I mean? You looking for the right. death to come. Right. See, people don't look at that right there. They right. don't look right. at that because you are left where you wanted, where you didn't want to be no more. All because of your lust. And now that you have got your lust, it's miserable. I don't know if you guys, every guy knows this story. You have that one chick that you want to sleep with all your life. You've been like that. Y'all grew up together. You're like, she's cold. Man, I've been wanting her since middle school. And then you finally get her, and then it's no good. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> now you don't want her no more. Why? Because you've been lusting for that thing your whole life. And then when you finally get it, it's crap. It's like, uh. That's your imagination running wild. There you go. And it's just like with sisters playing with uh this should be talking about sisters playing with toys. Yes. And it's like ain't no man, ain't no man oh, got no speed now. You know yes. What I'm yes. That's crazy. That's that's you go. Know. So that's see that that's that thing right there. You gotta let everybody, everybody got a job in this truth. Everybody got a job in this truth. Mm -hmm. It's either gonna be good or it's gonna be what? It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. Everybody got a job. You gotta let everybody complete their job. And that's why today's class really, really pay attention to as we go through this class because it's y'all going to learn some things on what you shouldn't and shouldn't do when these times, when these trials come to you. All right, let's continue. Uh, where was we at? Uh, Proverbs twelve and seventeen, please. Proverbs twelve and seventeen. Watch this. Proverbs twelve and verse seventeen. Read. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. Read. But a false witness deceit. See, so when you speak a truth, you show up forth righteousness. Mean the same thing you speak. Do you walk the walk? You talk the what? You talk the talk. But it says, read the second part. But. He says, but a false witness deceit. So he speaketh deceit. 
Jump down to verse 20. Read. Verse 20. Deceit is in the, uh, the heart of them that imagine evil. The, the, the deceit is in the heart of them that devise evil. Read. But to the counselors of peace is joy. But to the counselors of peace, there is joy. So when you when you got in your mind, when you got deceit is in the heart of them that imagine it evil. It, it's, it's not, it, hey man, these scriptures is very simple. They, it's, it's so simple that 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 uh, uh that my dumb butt can see it. So how can not we all see it? Y'all smarter than me. Why y'all can't see it? You see what I mean? Yeah. But our people don't see that because God gave you a strong delusion to believe a what? To believe a lie. Believe a lie. Watch this from our officer, uh, George. Give me Jeremiah chapter four, verse twenty-two. Book of Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. Uh -huh. It says, For my people is foolish. My people are foolish. They have not known me. Mm -hmm. They are stylish children. They are stylish children. It's that stylish means stupid. Read. And they have none understanding. And they don't have no understanding. Read. They are wise to do evil. And so God says, our people are what? They are wise to do evil. So see that that's that that's that lion. They they set their tongue at a thing where they wise to do evil. When you see this thing right here, now you know that our people are broken. What's wrong? Oh, they broken. Why they broken? They that's that's, that's why I say it's who plays with broken toys. Emotions. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Zechariah chapter uh, 1 verse 2. The book of Zechariah chapter 1 verse 2. Watch this. Book of Zechariah chapter 1 verse 2. Uh-huh. It says, the Lord has been so pleased with your father. Read it again. The Lord has been so pleased, displeased there you go. with your father. So the Lord has been so displeased with your fathers. Read. Therefore, say thou unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Read. Turn, what did he say? Turn unto me, and saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Watch this. Read. Be ye not as your fathers, mm -hmm. Unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways. So the prophets always told our people to turn from their evil ways. Watch this, come on. And from your evil doings. And from your evil doings, read. But they did not hear. They would not hear God, read. Nor hearken unto me, no. said the Lord. They would not hear the prophets, or did they not hearken unto me, said the Lord. Come on, read. Your father. Your what? Your father. Read. Where all where are they? Where what he say? He says, Your fathers. Your fathers. Where are they? Where they at? Come on. And the prophets. And the prophets. And do they live forever? And read. Hold on. No. Read right that. Read that again. Read it again. He says, Your fathers. Your fathers. Where are they? Where are they? And the prophets. And the prophets. Do they live forever? See, let me tell you something. God do not have respect to persons. God is letting you know that your your fathers, your forefathers, your father. Your your biological father, your forefathers, your 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 uh, elders, your teachers, the prophets, they don't live for what? They don't live for hell. So if you're in the midst of sin, brothers and sisters, and you die tomorrow, that's the end of your show. That's why the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't have enough wisdom to understand that, if you sin. And you know, I'm not trying to tell, I'm not trying to bring home nothing to nobody, but we know God kills, God make a laugh, God heals and he wounds, right? right? right. You go to sleep at night. Ooh, flat line. You ate a pork chop sandwich yesterday. <laughs> you done died in that scene. You died eating that pork chop sandwich and you cannot what? Repent. You cannot repent even if you came back. You ain't how you gonna repent? You ain't gonna repent. 
It's over. Every, every one of us that kept God's laws, we, we have sinned in some what, right? But we always came back to God and what? Repent. We're here on this last time. If you're here in these last times, this is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about before. I'm talking about right now. That's what I'm talking about, the pork chop sandwich now. If you eat that pork chop sandwich now and you die, let me, let me rephrase it because I don't we'll get nobody confused. If you eat that pork chop sandwich now and die, what happened? You waiting for the wait lake of what? Fire. How we know we in the last days? I'm gonna show you that real quick. Give me Daniel chapter 12. And we go, we, we, we do with Zachariah, but give me Daniel chapter 12. I'm gonna show you real quick that how we know we in the last days. Give me Daniel chapter 12, verse 8. Read that book. The book of uh, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 8. Watch this. And I heard. And this is only for the believers. Watch this. And I heard. But I understood not. I heard and I understood not. Read. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Read. Verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel. Go, out, go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up. The words are what? The words are closed up. Read. And sealed to the time of the end. You see, now the words is unsealed. Yeah. The words is unsealed. Yeah. That's how we know we're at the end. See, you, you brothers out there, you sisters out there, y'all don't understand that this Bible was not broke down like this before the prophets woke up at this time. From the 60s on to now, the prophets is woke. That's right. And the Bible is unsealed. And now the reason why y'all don't understand because granny didn't teach you that. That's right. Granddaddy didn't teach you that. Now granddaddy and grandmama, they was sleep, brothers and sisters. They didn't even know they selves. They were asleep. It was in a dream. What did he say? It was all a dream. Yeah. I woke up bleeding back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So now let's go from our, give me uh, Genesis 37 1. Genesis 37 1. <clears throat> the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 1. We read it all. We read it to 36. Officer, go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. <clears throat> Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brother. And the lad was with his sons, um, Bilhah. Bilhah. And with the sons of Zephah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Mm -hmm. Verse three. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, uh -huh. because he was the son of his old age. Is he was the son of his old age, meaning like he was working with the other kids. He really got to enjoy like playing with Joseph. He really got to sit down and he got to really raise Joseph himself. That's the reason why he was the son of his old age. Because when you when you when he was younger, he with the other kids, he was still out there, had to work. Now his boys is out there doing the work because he's older. He's he now he can sit back. He was at retirement age. Gotcha. Do that make sense? No. You gotta remember he had Joseph as he was older. Right to his read. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Great. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. <laughs> and he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaves rose, arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obscene and made obeisance to my sheaves. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more. They hated him, they hated him what? <coughs> yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father. 
and his and his and, and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Agreed. Shall I and thy brother and thy and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down yourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him. Yeah, and his brothers what? Yeah, and his brethren envied him. See, they, so they didn't understand that the dream was in the end was talking about when they when he was going to get sent into captivity into Egypt, mm -hmm. and then he was going to during the seven years of the uh, of the famine that they was going to have to come to him for uh, uh, food, and they was got to repent. Of what they have done yeah. unto him, yeah. so they didn't understand the dream at this time. So he, he, God for it showed him this thing early. I agree. Watch it, verse eleven. And, and and his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. And his brethren see his brothers envy him, but his father observed the saying. So he 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 had understanding of yeah. what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. I agree. Watch this. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in, in, in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brothers feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto him, Here I am. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So, and so he went he, so he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem, mm -hmm. and a certain man found him. And behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brother. He said, I seek my brother. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. Free. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when he saw, and when he, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him. You see that they right there, they already planned against him. They seen him fall, and they was planning. They conspired against him. They planned evil against them. You remember God says in Jeremiah 4, 22, our people are wise to do what? To do evil. Watch it. And you notice something. They already had a hatred for their brother because the father loved him more just because he got to spend more time with him. But it didn't mean that uh, 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 Jacob didn't love where, where we at? Didn't mean he actually didn't love his other sons. Didn't right. mean he didn't love his other sons. But he loved them <coughs> just the same. But go ahead and watch his read. And it says that uh, and, and, and even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Uh -huh. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And and we will say some evil beast has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dream. And Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. So they, they, they you see that right there? They already, they had, this is their brother. Flesh and blood brother, not no hood brother like, you know, right, right. from the hood, you know. Now nah, these are brothers. He's like, bro, hold on, bro. They big brothers. Big brothers. We're going to kill you, bro. Look how much envy right. they had for their brother. Yeah. So watch this. Come on. Hey, look, y'all notice. Look, what are they feed? What's they feeding off of? Emotions. See, that's what y'all got to remember. Today's class is playing who plays with broken toys. Uh, uh, in parentheses, emotions. emotions. Yes, because see, you got to remember, a person's emotions will help you kill your brother, your best friend, your uh, mother, your father. Emotions will help you do anything to anybody, man. Yeah. And that's why we of Israel, we must be able to control our spirit, guys. Go ahead. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered them out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into the pit, into this pit. 
that is in the wilderness. Stop right there. I'm gonna, hey, I want to show y'all something. Everybody check this out. You know that right then and there, who told Reuben, y'all brothers, who told Reuben not to kill him? Most of had to kill him. There you go. There you go. Right then and there, God had to send the angel down, Christ, to end the what? Intervene in their thoughts. Don't kill them. You see that? You see that? They couldn't say because the reason why is, that's why I was explaining this in the class, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago, I was explaining in the class that when you know how people end up getting killed, it's how you say you was going to go right and you wouldn't have got killed. But something told you, now nah, go left and put something put it in your mind to go left. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'll be safe left. Then you like, nah, I'm more safe right. But your mind got you already set to go left. So now you got no choice. So you go left, and, and there you go, you see your enemy coming. And you like, damn, I knew I should have went right. right. But that was God. He already set you up. You'll put the devil in your whisper in your ear. Or that angel to whisper in your ear made you go what? Left. Because it was your time to go. Mm -hmm. It was your day. Right there. Alright, so I just want to explain that right here that Reuben, <laughs> Reuben, God whispered, Christ whispered to Reuben, don't kill him. He put that thought in his head. Mm -hmm. For him to so because they was ready to murder. But watch what happens. Come on. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and laid no hand upon him, that he might rip that he he might rid him out of the hands, out of their hands. To uh, deliver him to his father again, and it came to pass when Joseph was come to his brother that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his his coat of many colors that was uh, that was on him. Stop! I want to stop at that. Right? You see that? The first thing they did is strip them of that coat. Give me it. You, give me it. Should have been man anyway. That's what it was all over. That was the most that's coming wrong. That the daddy, the daddy loved the more, so came with the coat. And, and right there, you gotta think about it. When did when did, I, when did Christ have a coat? Yeah, I was just thinking. That. All wool, all wool, and no no seams in it. Christ had a cold coat too. So that they were jealous of Christ over some other things other than just the truth. Yeah, they yeah. they could have been dressed on how I mean jealous of how he dressed. Yeah, they could have been jealous of how his hair was laid. Well, you know, I don't know how his hair was exactly, yeah, yeah. but I'm just saying they could have been jealous. Yeah, give a prophecy. Yeah. Yeah, give a prophecy, right? As we know that far most that they was jealous because he had the word of God. But I'm just talking about the 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 attire. The other mm -hmm. things that motivated them to kill Christ also. Because you know how it is. When you start despising somebody, you start despising everything. Everything about them. Shoe strings, everything. Yeah, you, you know, everybody had that. Everybody, <laughs> damn, he said shoe strings. <laughs> damn, <laughs> nigga, I don't like it, damn, shoe strings. <laughs> damn. Um, you think you find something? Yeah, I got you, though. You're right, though. Damn. Come on, read. <laughs> <Maybe you're laughs> I'm going uh, and they Verse 24. Him. Okay. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. And there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Galilee. Galilee with their camels bearing spice, sp spiceries and balm and, and myrrh. Going to carry it down to Egypt. Stop. Let me show y'all something. I don't know if y'all peeped that out. But right there, the Ishmaelites, yep. which is the Arabs, sold him in slavery. Then you're going to read about it. Uh -huh. Way back then. And they sold us in the uh, Sahara slave trade. Yep. Same people. Same people that sold us back then. Same people that sold us what? <laughs> Today. The, the, the difference was. Those was black Arabs at that time, and now you got the Turkish Arabs, the uh, the uh, the Arabs that is the Turkish, the uh, what they call that on. I can't get it. I can't. I just read it. I can't get my. Uh, Let's start with a C, ain't it? The, the word. I know what you're talking about. I just read. I don't worry about it. I'm not even gonna waste my time. I'm, I ain't gonna waste my time. First. No. 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 no uh. 
That, don't make me talk about it no more. The, the herbs, sodas. I, I, when it comes to my head, I'll tell you. When it comes to my head, go ahead and read. And uh, they were going to carry it down to Egypt. The Ottoman Turks. Ottoman Turks. The Ottoman Turks. That's it. That, that's, I, ah, go ahead. <laughs> and, Ju and Judah said unto his brother, What profit is it if we slay our It says, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Three. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let us and let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. And his brothers was what? And they were content. And read. Then there passed by many knights, merchant men, and they drew uh, drew and left lifted up uh, Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Is Is uh, Ishmaelites for, for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes, and he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goat and dipped the coat in the blood. Damn. And, and they, they, that's how much hatred they had. They, you know, real talk, let me stop right there. They didn't only have hatred for, the, for uh, Joseph, right? Y'all got to understand, they also had hatred for their father. Yeah. Because the, for them to destroy the coat, like, they're they going to play it off for that. They're going to play it off. They bring the coat back to play it off like something happened to them. But real talk, they they still had a, they had a little resentment for their father. I'm not going to say they hated him to the point where, like, you killed their father. But they had resentment for their father for liking Joseph more than them. And they was getting ready to send him into an emotional hurricane, you know what I'm saying? Do that make sense? Yeah. It makes sense? But watch this, read, come on. And they took Joseph's coat and, and killed a kid and, and, and killed the, a goat and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to the father and said, this we have found. No, now, uh, no now, whether it be thy son's coat or no. Now hold it. Watch this. Give me go back to Psalms, because then I'm gonna I'm gonna clarify. I'm gonna make clear my statement. What I was just saying. I'm gonna clarify. Watch this. Give me uh, Psalms 35 and 11 again, please. Uh -huh. Psalms 35 and 11, please. Book of Psalms, chapter 35, verse 11. False witness. And read it again. False witnesses. Uh, false witnesses. Did rise up. Read. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Read. They rewarded me evil for good. Read. To the spoiling of my soul. Now, now this is going to make sense to y'all. Hold on. Now, hold that. We're going to re keep on reading. Then I'm going to come right back to this scripture. Now, watch how it adds up to that scripture. Watch this. Read. Uh, they sold it to the Mediate they had blood and they sent it to their father. Verse 33. <clears throat> and and he knew and he knew it and said, It is my son's coat, and evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph, Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces, and Jacob rent his clothes, and put sackcloth upon his loin. And mourned for his son many days. And he did what? And he mourned for his son many days. Watch this. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. Read. But he refused to be comforted. Read. And he says, For I will go down into the grave until my son's mourning. Read. For uh, thus his father wept for him. Now, now, now go ahead and finish it off. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar. An officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Watch this. Now go back to Psalms 35. Now watch how it hit. Watch how it hit. It hit a little different right here. Watch this. Psalm 35 and, and 11. 11. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. See, what did those brothers do? They laid to Joseph charge that he knew not. Read. Watch this. They rewarded me. Evil. They rewarded Joseph evil, read for good for the good that he that only by him being a, his uh, father's son, 
Read, watch this. They reward me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. Now that goes to Jacob. What did they what did they do to Jacob right there? They ruined his what? They spoiled his what? His mind. Why did they spoil his mind? Let's go back and read verse 35 again. Verse 35, and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to come to him. Watch this. But, but he refused. But he what? He refused to be comforted. That's the, that's the destroying of his soul right there. That's the discomfort of his soul. His soul was destroyed right there. He, 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 he said, I refuse to be comforted. Mm -hmm. Do Psalms 35, 11 and 12 make sense to y'all now? Because so that 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 right there shows you that our people, our people don't care about who they hurt right. because of their emotions. They don't care about who they hurt or what they what they destroy. They don't care about doing God's laws or keeping God's uh, Sabbaths. They don't care no more because mm -hmm. the emotion of them allowed them to discontinue or to get away from. Yeah, it's like. Uh, Go ahead. If I may, uh, go ahead. I was watching the news and it was interviewing this lady, man. Uh, her uh, grandson got killed. I don't know if this was maybe a year ago or something, but nevertheless, the woman, you know, they was interviewing her and she was talking about how it hurt so bad. You know, they hadn't, uh, they hadn't found out who the murderers were, but she was talking about, I guess she loved him so much that, you know, she spoke, you know how we say we'll take it to our grave. And she said, you know, she said, I, 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 I got to live every day, probably to the day I die, and never give up, get over this thing. You know, she'll be sorrowful. Right. For, for, until she dies. Until she dies. Yeah. And some people die because of sorrow. I was looking at another story. Uh, me and you, remember I was telling you, it was a man, wife died. She died. I, I forgot how she died. It's, I got it in my phone. I can't look at it right now. I forgot how she died. But not even a, a month later, he died. He died because he was so sad she died. He couldn't, he, 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 he worried himself to death. Wow. So, and the same thing, what you just saying is the same thing that, well, see, the mother that actually died, but this man actually died worrying himself to death because he wanted to be with his wife. He like willed himself to death. But it tells us to be aware of that thing in the, in the apartment. Yes, sir. That's it. That's it. That's fresh. There you go. It's said depression. That's why Ecclesiastes said, yeah. go ahead. What was your saying? That's what Deacon was talking about. To change your body and all that. Yeah. Somebody that's depressed, you can tell they are. They start they down. Down after that. Yeah. yeah. They down. It, it, makes you, it makes you a whole different person, man. It's a whole different ball game when you're depressed. You lose your energy. Yeah. You lose your mind. You lose everything, man. Mm -hmm. You know, everything just starts to go because depression, depression is a, a, a demon itself. That's a spirit. And, 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 jump, and depression jump on you, you now you straight up like this. Now you all hung, yeah, you know. Yeah. And depression jumps on you, man. It's, it's a lot. It's a you know a lot of people get depressed when they lose their limbs or toes or anything. They get depressed. You know what I mean? So these things happen. But Premier, give me Genesis chapter thirty-eight, verse one. The book of Genesis chapter thirty-eight, verse one, and it came to pass at the time. That Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite, whose name was Harah. And Judah saw there was a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. And she conceived and bare a son. Mm -hmm. And he called his name Ur. Mm -hmm. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she called his name Onan. Uh, okay. and, and she yet again conceived and bare a son and called his name Shelah. And he was at Shabazz when she bare him. And, Read. and Judah took a wife for Ur, his first son, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's first son, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. So he was wicked in the sight of the Lord. Watch this. And the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Read. Go in unto thy brother's wife. So now, you now he slew, God slew him. Now he's going to explain you why he slew him. Watch this. Now he's going to explain why. He told you he killed him, but now he's going to explain why he killed him. Read. 
And Judah said unto Oni, go into thy brother's wife and marry her. I'm sorry. Er, Dad, now I'm just going to tell you about Oni. Come on, come on, read. I'm sorry. I missed that on my way. <laughs> go ahead. And Judah said unto Oni, go into thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. Read. And Oni knew that the seed should not be his. He knew the seed should not be his. Read. And it came to pass when he went in unto Hold on. He knew the seed should not be his. What was that? Emotions. Man, I ain't doing that. It don't even matter if God told you to do it or not. It's now your emotions is going. You said, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Because of your emotions. Come on, read. Watch it. He says, the only knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground. So he went into his brother's wife for pleasure. He went in his brother's wife for pleasure. He just did it because he he always had that little thought in the back of his mind. You know what? I want, I want her. You know, she looked nice, man. So he always had it in the back of his mind. So he wanted to try, he wanted to try what the field looked like. I want to try what the field uh field feel like. I want to see what the field feel like. So, <laughs> so watch this. Read. <laughs> Come on. And he spilled it on the ground. And he spilled it on the ground. Lest that he should give seed to his brother. Come on. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Read. Watch this. Wherefore he slew him also. Wherefore the Lord slew him also. So, so brothers, 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 if you're not doing merge the right way, and if you're fornicating, God shows you right here. Fornicating will get you what? Kill. Kill. If you're not doing what God tells you to do, you go in that man's wife, and hey, he's your brother, me and your brothers. You, uh, you, I die. You, I ain't got no baby. You got to go in my wife. And she got to conceive C, C, uh, C so it can be named after me. But I don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. But you want to do it, I but you don't want to do it. I did it, but I didn't, yeah. You didn't want to, you didn't want, yeah, my, yeah, you didn't want yeah. my king to right, be right. like that, but you did it. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? But I pulled up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's on pleasure. And yeah. so, and so he put him to what? Yeah. You see that thing right there? From there, let's go to Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Wow. See, at that emotion and emotions, those things that get you what? Killed. The emotions that get you killed. Real talk. People don't realize in these scriptures, they don't know. People must think it was a different kind of people back in. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? When people act with no understanding, when they try to read the Bible, they don't realize that people are just like us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There was no difference. Exactly. He said 16, number 16. 16 and 1, yes, sir. Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the son of Eliab, Eliab. and On, the son of Peleth, Peleth, son of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel. Watch this. 200 and 50 princes of the assembly. Watch this. Famous. What they was? Famous. Famous men. In the congregation. Uh-huh. Men of renown. You know, well, and you know what that famous add up to me? These guys was famous. You know, they was they was famous guys. They was they was well known in the congregation, right? All right, so they rose up against Moses. Watch this read. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and they said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then, lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah, and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will shew who are his and who is holy. Really? And I will cause him to come near unto me. Uh, and I will cause him to come near unto him. Even him who he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do, take your censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. 
And it shall be that the men that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. So read. And Moses said, and Moses said unto Korah, Hear, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel, mm -hmm. to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, mm -hmm. and to stand before the congrega congregation to minister unto them. And he said, and he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also, for which cause both thou and all the company that are gathered together against the Lord. Stop right there. We're, we're verse you at? Verse 11. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, because I left something out. All right, let's go back to verse 3 real quick. I'm sorry. Verse 3. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation uh, of the Lord. Okay, so Brumer, officer, give me Numbers chapter 11, and I want 30 to 34. The book of Numbers chapter 11, verse 30. And Moses got him. Got a man Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. Really? And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall upon the camp mm -hmm. as it were a day as it were a day's journey on this side and as it were a day's journey on the other side around about the camp. Really? And as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Come on. And the people stood upon and people stood up all that day. And all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. Three. He that gathered, let's gather ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves around about the camp. Three. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth. While the flesh was yet between their teeth, three. Ere it was chewed, mm -hmm. the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Three. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hadavah, because they were buried, and because there they buried the people that lusted. Because they buried the people that what? That lusted. See, though, no. So now you got to remember this is what happened to Korah and Thank They was they was they was lusting over the position. Yeah. He's going to explain it. Boy, but now from her, because I missed all this when I was going through her. Give me Numbers chapter 12, verse 10. Watch this. Numbers chapter 12, verse 10. Read. And the cloud departed off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous. Read. White as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. She was what? She was leprous. She was leprous. So now, the reason I'm putting all this together, because what happened to these people God did it. So much is from Berg. Give me Numbers chapter 10. I want 25 through 33. I mean 13. Numbers 13. 25 through 30. I'm, I'm going all the way to Numbers until we get back to 16. And I'm showing you because what that's what it is. Let me go back. <clears throat> Numbers chapter 16 verse 3. He says, And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation is holy. So everybody see that, right? Mm -hmm. So they were saying that, hey, everybody's holy. Everybody got the knowledge of God. God's with everybody. Right. So what I'm showing y'all, what I did is, I went. I started with, um, with eleven. We started with eleven and thirty, and God smote the people when they was lusting for what. For the food, for the food, right? Yeah. That was lusting for the for the meat. So God smoked them with what? Food poison. And killed much people. Alright? So the next thing was Miriam. She lusted to tell a man of God what to do. She should have let that be with Aaron and Moses. But now she put her nose 
in men's business. And guess what? God turned them to what? Lepers. Watch 13. Now let's go. 13 and now this is the next. Because they said everybody in the congregation is what? Holy. Now watch this. Numbers chapter 13 verse 25. The book of Numbers chapter 13 verse 25. And as they returned from searching of the land after, after 40 days, and they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel to the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Three. And they told him and said, We came into the land where this thou sentest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey. And and this is the fruit of it. Really? Nevertheless, the people be strong and dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak. And we saw the children of Anak there. Mm. And, the, uh, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. Really? And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea really? and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people. And Caleb stilled the people. And so he calmed the people down. Read and said, "Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it." Read. But the men that went up with him said, "We be not able to go up against this people, for they are strong, stronger than we are." Mm -hmm. And they brought up an evil report of the land which that which they had searched up uh, to. The children of Israel saying the land saying the land through which we have gone to search it is the land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are great are men of great stature. Great. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were, we was what? And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Three. And so we were in their sight. So we was in their sight. So here is the people, the people, God told them, the, 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 God already told our people don't be scary, right? So they come up with a bad report where God already sent you to this land to take over. But the other men come up with a bad report talking about these people are like giants. So there is another episode of our people doing the wrong what? So they exaggerated. They exaggerated, doing their wrong thing. Because they got, I mean, speaking their own word. Because you got to remember, God already told us that we was going to overcome mm -hmm. these people mm -hmm. as we was going. You, Moses told them many times, don't have no fear. Did they not see that God defeated the Egyptians? Yeah. With, no, with no what? No problem. No problem. God had defeated the Egyptians. So then you see God was, Christ was in the, uh, the chariot uh, uh, seeing us through everywhere he was going at, giving us light at night and giving us, uh, it, it, it was uh, for day for us to follow, right? Why was we still spiritual? Why was we still scared? Watch this. 14 and 1. Book of Numbers, chapter 14 and 1. And all the congregations lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Hold on, what they do? And they murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Watch these, come on. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land? To fall by the sword, Three. that our lives and our children should be prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Let us make a what? Let us make a captain. Did you see that? That's the emotions. They scared. So they got the they got fear on them. And now let us make us a captain. Let us make us somebody over us. Mm -hmm. And let us do our own what? The own thing. Let us do our own thing. But in number 16, didn't Cora and M said it's the same thing almost. You take too much upon yourself, seeing all the congregation is holy. All the congregation is not what? Not holy. Ain't none of y'all holy. <laughs> Ain't none of y'all holy. Come on, keep on reading. Watch this, read. <laughs> uh, I lost my place again. 
Verse 6. And Joshua the son of Nun, Caleb the son of uh, Jephunneh, which were them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and he spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we with which we pass through to search, it is exceedingly good, it's an exceedingly good land. Uh -huh. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land. See, if the Lord delight in us, he will bring us into this land. Read. A land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Read. But all the congregation bade stone, and all the congregation bade stone them with stones. Come on. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them. I will smite them with what? Pestilence and what? And disinherit them. Read. And will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. So they, they emotions allowed God to get mad. Now God wanted to put hands on them. He wanted to kill them. That's what, that's what, that's what happened with emotions. Emotions can run in different ways. You can, you can be, uh, you can have an angry emotion. You can have a lust emotion. You can have a scared emotion. You can have a, uh, give me some more. Give me something else. Well, also. emotion can pump you up. Okay. You, you know? have a pump up emotion. Uh, the, the yeah. make you have courage. Yeah, make you have courage. You know what I mean? So emotions can make you do different things, stupid things. They can make you do stupid what? Yeah. Things. Make you that's, stupid. that's why it says who plays with broken toys, uh, parenthesis, emotions. Because when people have emotions, they tend to do stupid, stupid stuff. Thing. Yeah. I'm mad at you, so I'm going to do blue. And when you do blue, what happens is you're not doing it to me. You're doing it to who? <laughs> doing it to God. You're doing it to God. Let's go to 15 and 30. Let's go 15 and 30. I'm giving y'all all the examples of them not being righteous people. 15, 30 through 36. Watch this. In the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 30. But the soul that doth not presumptuously whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproaches the Lord. Agreed. And the soul shall be cut off from among his people, uh -huh. because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off. Agreed. His iniquity shall be upon him. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man to gather sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and said to all the congregation. And they put him in war. They put him in what? They put him in war. Now this dude was gathering sticks, right? Now what ignorant brother grab gather? You gathering sticks up, right? You gathering sticks up. And God already told you don't go out on the Sabbath day. But you know what? I'm gonna go do my thing. I'm gonna grab that. I I'm gonna I'm gonna grab these sticks. Instead of him going to an elder. Or Moses or Aaron and say, hey, is it okay that I do this? He said, I'm going to do this on my own. He said, I'm going to do this on my own. See, counsel is for everything should be counsel in. Everything. There should be counsel. If you feel like, hey, brother, hey, if I get the job and it, and it, and it works in going into the Sabbath, uh, should I get that job? Your counsel is gonna be like, nah, bro, you should not get that job. Mm -hmm. Because you as you're gonna you 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 gonna get a job and you're gonna work into breaking God's what? Sabbath. That's that's a that's a bad that's a bad thing. Don't do that. But if you go to your if you go a, to the council and you and, and you don't say that and you just go get the job and it works into Saturday, and then you be like, hey bro, where's my man's at? Oh, uh, well, he had to work. What do you mean he had to work? He went working on the Sabbath at first. Right. Well, he switched jobs because he needed more money. But those, for that little bit of more money he's going to get, mm -hmm. he'll, he'll issue himself death. Because if you're not breaking God's laws, why would you start breaking God's laws? Right. If you're not working on Saturday, why would you start working on what? 
Sir, see the, those things right there works out. That's why we gotta have counsel. That's why you gotta come and talk to somebody. You know, uh, brothers will be like, I see brothers do this. Oh uh, man, y'all brothers, I like robots. Y'all sisters like robots. Why? Because our women can't go bone anybody they want to bone. Because we can't uh, uh, do anything that we want to do. Uh, maybe y'all like robots. Y'all like the broken robots. They just, you can't control your, uh, what, what was his name? Danger Roy Roger. Danger. Danger Roy Roger. You can't control yourself. You can't control yourself because the reason why is you don't have that robotic mind. Meaning your mind tells you, God is telling you, boy, don't sin. And you're like, yes, sir. You don't have that in you. You have, I do what I want to do. You have, I got fine money. You got, I, I sold five million albums. I mean, five million CDs. Bro, I'm rich. You got that mindset. So with, with that mindset, guess what comes? Death. Because you ain't got no counsel. Everybody can do what they want to do until it's time to be judged. And then every last one of y'all crying out to God. Don't think of those little brothers in front of them when those when those gang bangers and the and them dudes pop up and they pop out on those dudes. Don't think that the first thing come to their head. Oh my God. Oh God, please help me. God ain't gonna help you. And these ain't gonna help none of y'all if y'all not doing his laws. You might think God gonna help you. I'm telling you, man. Quit playing God like he's some chump. Because he ain't gonna help you, man. You'd rather play some dude like they some chump. Or some woman like she's some chump. But don't play God like he's some chump. Chump. Because he's not gonna help you. He's not gonna bow down to you. Mm -hmm. And you in the midst of sin. He's not gonna happen. Alright, keep on reading. Uh, I'll start at 32 again. While the children of Israel in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they found him gathering sticks. And they that found him gathering sticks, they brought him to Moses and Aaron and to the congregation. And they put him in war because it was not declared what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. You see, God made the decision. Put him to death. God made the decision. Moses didn't make the decision because he was the leader. God made the decision. Same thing we do with the laws. Yeah. If you get put out of the congregation, or if, if, if you, if you, if, if God allows you to sin, that's on you. That's God's decision for you. You have a choice. Everybody has a choice. If it's a hot stove right here in this corner, who's gonna touch the hot stove if you're gonna get burned? You be the fool to touch the hot stove and your whole palm is gone. <laughs> who does it? Somebody who thinks, somebody who's emotional, somebody who's got that crazy emotion, somebody got those demons in them like the uh, like in Mark 5. Somebody got those demons in them, they'll come and touch the hot stove. But what person they got some kind of sense is going to touch that hot stove? See what I mean? That's the same thing right here. Moses him did not make the decision until God. Read 36. He says, uh, well, let me finish up. It says, all the congregations are stoned and with stones without the camp. Read. And all the congregations bought. Bought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. And he what? And he died. Three. As the Lord commanded. Now, so we went from eleven to fifteen, back to sixteen. How many people was holy? Every last one of those people was messing up. Every last one of those people was messing up. We could have went back to uh, where is it at? Where the snakes? Twenty us twenty one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. They even after Corey and Dayton died, the people still was messing up. Yeah. Even after they seen God open the earth and swallow them up. That's why God says, that's why Christ says, there should no signs be given. Because y'all can see, y'all can see Christ walk right in this room and show y'all his palms and his hands 
as soon as he disappeared, your ass is going to be right back sitting. Just like that. But damn, that was Christ. Man, I see Christ. Whoa! Yeah, hey, what, what you want to do? What you, you want to go get this out? Oh, okay, come on. That's, that's what our people do. That's what our people do, man. We don't, we just, we don't have no sense. Mm -hmm. They seen the miracles. Yeah. Now let's go to verse 9, 16 and 9. Come on. Uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 16, verse 9. Read. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you. It seems it's, it's a small thing unto you. Watch this. And that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel mm -hmm. to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. Read. Verse 10. Hold on, hold on. From our, give me uh Give me 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 17, please. And then give me Jeremiah 43 and 1. 1 Samuel, Samuel 16, 17. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 17. Uh-huh. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Read. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son. Of, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehem Bethlehemite. Bethlehemite, come on. That is cunning and plain, Great. and a mighty valiant, valiant man, and, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person. And the Lord is with him. And the Lord, and the what? And the Lord is with so him. So now, now from her, the Lord is with him. Give me Jeremiah forty-three and one. So. No, it says seen it, but it's a small thing to you that the God of Israel separated you from the congregation of Israel. So God was with King David. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Read Jeremiah 43 and 1. Watch this. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people of the, all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, had, had sent to them even all these words. Then spake Azariah, the son of Hoshiah, Hoshiah mm -hmm. and John, Joniah, jo Jonah. Jah Jahanah, Jah the son of Kareth, and all the proud men. All the what? All the proud, all the proud men. All the proud men, Saying unto Jeremiah. What they say? Speakest falsely. What? Thou, thou that, speakest falsely. So they told Jeremiah, you speak falsely. Read <laughs> The Lord our God has not sent thee to, to, to say, God, uh, go not into Egypt to sojourn there. So, so he said, they told them, they said, Jeremiah, God didn't send you. Ain't this the same thing that Corbin and Nathan said? Same the, thing. Same thing. Yep. Read. Come on. But Baruch, the, but, son, but Baruch. the son of, of Neriah, Read. Set, thee on, uh, set thee on against us. For to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captive into Babylon. So you see that right there. So Jeremiah, Baruch was Jeremiah, like he was his like understudy, his, his writer for, for him. You understand? Mm -hmm. So they was together. That's why they said, but Baruch, but Baruch uh, sit thee on against us. For deliver us into the hands of the Chaldeans. So they're thinking that the bands of God is going out, going against what? Against them. Yeah. They're not going against you. They just telling you what God said. Right. All right. And all that happened because Jeremiah, the people took Jeremiah and locked Jeremiah up. So Baruch had to prophesy unto the people after they locked Jeremiah up. Because they were they were trying to kill Jeremiah at the same time. All right. So uh, let's go back. No, no, from her, Officer George, give me Proverbs 16 and 6. No, 6 and 16. To end this note right here. So that, that, then we'll go back and read 9 again. Book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 16. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven, are an abomination unto him. A proud look, proud look, a lying tongue, lying tongue, 
and hands that shed innocent blood. Three. And heart that is uh, and a heart that deceiveth that devises devises a wicked imagination. You see a heart that devises a wicked you know people got that mindset of uh, thinking of wicked, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. oh man, how can I you know what? I'm gonna try to do something. I'm gonna uh let me see. How can I take your brother's flat screen TV? Hey, you know what? Hey, George. Hey, can you help me think of how we can get that TV? Now we can get that TV out of his house. <laughs> I already know. Yeah. That's devising yeah. something in your, in your wicked, in your mind. Three. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Is it feet that be swift and running to mischief? Is it a feet that swift and run into trouble? Three. False witness. Like false what? A false witness. That do what? That speaketh lies. Come on. That he that soweth discord among brothers. You know, that, that sword discord, of course, among brothers. You always have brothers and sisters that try to come in and try to be cool with brothers. They just try to come in, fit in, be cool with brothers. And then they finally, when they got that, when they got that dummy, because the Bible says, hold on real quick. Let me show you what I mean by that. When they come in and they try to, they try to come in and uh, give me uh, Ecclesiastes six and fourteen. Let me show you what I mean. Watch it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter six and verse fourteen. A faithful friend is a strong defense. Three, and he. That have, sat, that have found such a one has found a treasure. So uh, a, a strong, a faithful friend is a strong defense. And he that found one finding the treasure. So when brothers and sisters come in and you get cool with the congregation, you get cool with the elders of the congregation, you and the elders, and then here come, here comes some brothers sneaking their way on in. They the snake. What they doing? They'll find the weakest link. Mm-hmm. Hey, brother. Now they glued to you. Yeah. Now here you are. You my friend. All because you know why? His emotions is, I don't get to teach nobody. Now I can teach this brother what I know. I can teach this brother what I know. So now guess what happens? Now that snake that came in, he calls what? Division. There you go. You gotta be. Yeah, you gotta have your mindset right, and that's what Corey and Dayton was basically trying to do. That's what they, were doing. they was doing the same thing. They was causing division, and they was causing deceit. That's why they said, "Ain't the whole, ain't the whole congregation holy?" Mm -hmm. That's why we read from eleven through uh, back to sixteen that they just messed up time after time after time after time. Instead of them sitting there listening to Moses and getting wisdom, they wanted to hurry up and be equal with Moses. And in the process of being equal with Moses, they was all getting jacked up. They was all getting killed. <laughs> Go ahead. Ain't they the famous men? Yeah, that was the baby. That's why they, they was so used to having that reputation. They were so used to having that reputation. I'll praise what you said right there. Let's go back to where we was uh, also. Did we read Proverbs 16 to 19? I mean, see, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay, go back to Numbers 16, and we're going to start with verse 10. Book of Numbers, chapter 16, verse 10. And he has brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also. You see that? So not only did God, he God have brought the Levites close to God to do his service, but that wasn't good enough. They want the they want everything. They want the Moses job, they want the priesthood, mm -hmm. they want everything. They want to be the leaders of the congregation. They weren't happy with just being uh, 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 God chose them to do a good work. They weren't happy with that. We have to have it all. And if you got that type of spirit on you, 
what's going to happen is you're going to fall. Because the reason why is whoever the most high appoints, he's not going to let you fold them unless they're not appointed. Right. You're not going to frog them. You're not going to jump over them. How? They, Moses came to get y'all out of captivity. God didn't go in there and say, Cora, wake up, nigga. I need you to do me some work. Hey, free the people. Cora, you didn't know nothing about the Most High until Moses came and gave you that truth. He gave you that truth, and then, now all of a sudden, you're smarter than, you're smarter than Moses. I mean, yeah, Moses. Mm -hmm. And earn. How? See, but see, these are things that I try to I'm trying to bring reality into. I'm putting a little humor behind it, but I'm not, I'm really not joking. I'm trying to show y'all these things happens in the congregation. But for us to know these things happens, that means our eyeballs, give me that in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Our eyeballs, and I got big ones, so I'm going to show you what eyeballs are supposed to do. Watch this. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Be sober and vigilant. You know what vigilant is? Watch. You got to watch. Be, be a watchman. Read. Uh, because your adversary, the devil, is like as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. You see that? Because the devil is that's the devil on your back. Corey and Dave to them, they had the devil on their back and they didn't even know it. Because they why? They were strong in precepts, but they went they didn't have the understanding. Right. They were strong in precepts. That's why they felt like they was equal to Moses, because see, mm -hmm. what you taught me, I already know it. I know it backwards, frontwards, blah, blah, blah. But what Corey and Dayton didn't did them have is understanding because even back then, uh, God, uh, give, me, uh, give me Numbers chapter 27, verse 14. Numbers, Numbers chapter 27 and verse 14. Three. For ye rebelled against my commandments in the desert of Zion. And, and in no, the, that ain't what I want. Hold on. That ain't what I want. I don't think I want that. 15. 16, I'm sorry. Uh, Numbers 27 and 16. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. So everybody already knew that Moses was over the congregation according to God put Moses over the congregation. God said set a man over the congregation. He didn't say he said a woman. Yep. He didn't say he want no woman's opinion. And he don't want no, he also don't want no effeminate man in that position either. That's right. He can't have no soft cookie in that position. So <laughs> God said set a man over the congregation. So Corey and Dayton them, what they was was emotional men. They was a train wreck. They was a train wreck. Let's go back. So where we was? Uh, number 16 and 11. Come on. It says, for which cause both thou and all the company that are gathered together against the Lord and what is Aaron that ye murmured against him. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the son of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. What'd they say? They said, we will not come up. Hey, you know this right there. They, the right there they were saying, you know what? Bro, you ain't over us. You ain't over us. They say we, they, he called for them to have a, to sit down and speak to him. But they said, we will not. But we will not come up. We ain't coming up to you, bro. We, ain't, we don't need to talk to you. We. Is it a small thing that thou has brought us up? Out of the land of the uh, that flowed with milk and honey. See now, they said that the land that he brought them out of flowed with milk and honey. Read to kill us in the wilderness, except thou makest thou altogether a prince over us. Read moreover, thou hast not brought us into the land that flows with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of the fields and vineyards. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? Stop. 
Did Moses bring did Moses bring them out or did the most high? Moses. Moses. The most high brought them out. So why is they saying that Moses, they said that Moses, read that point again, watch his moreover. He says, moreover, has not, it says, moreover, has not, uh, thou has, has not, thou has not brought us into the land of the poor with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of the field and vineyards. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. We will not what? We will not come up. So the verse I wanted was uh, 13. It's, 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 it said, it is a small thing that thou has brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us. So God said he was going to put them, bring them into a land that flow with milk and honey. They said we are already in the land that flow with milk and honey. They are rebellious, emotional brothers. Go back to 15, then verse 15, come on. Verse 15, and Moses was very wroth. He was angry. And he said unto the Lord, respect not thou their offering. Now y'all see that? Now y'all, it gets to the point where you got to realize something. Moses got to the point where if you read Jeremiah, you see the same thing. Any, any of the prophecies, it even, it, it gets to a point where you get to the point where you get angry at the what? At the people. We just read that last week with Jeremiah, remember? Yep. And, and, and watch this, read that again. Moses said what? And Moses was wrong. Moses was very wrong. Read. And said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offerings. I have I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. Now, now y'all see that now. He's, he's saying is, brother, why are you dealing with me like this? I have not took nothing from you. Right. I ain't did nothing to you. Why are you dealing with me like this? Because what happens is brothers get in their feelings and they, they not realizing that they are already uh, uh, developed a hatred in their head for you mm -hmm. just because you are the leader. Just because you you correct them just because you tell them something for their right. Yep. They already have developed a hatred for you in your head. Moses said, "I didn't do nothing for uh, against y'all, man." Right. He said, "God, don't don't hear nothing they got to say because I ain't took nothing from them." Read, come on. Verse sixteen. And Moses said unto Korah, "Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow." And take every man his censer. And take every man his what? His censer. Breathe. And put incense in them. And put what? And put incense in them. Come on. And bring ye before the Lord. And bring ye before the Lord. What verse? Uh, 17. Go ahead. And every man his censer, 250 censers. Thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And each you, stop right there. I right, verse 7, give me Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4. Proverbs 21, verse 4. And high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Read it one more time. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 4. And high look. A high look. And a proud heart. And a proud heart. And the plowing of the wicked is sin. And the lamp of the wicked is sin. Their, their ways are sin. Jump to verse 10. Verse 10, the soul of the wicked desireth evil. No, that ain't it. Hold on real quick. Give me one second, guys. All right, I messed up right here somewhere. Read that again, verse 21 and uh, 4. 
The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 4. Three. And high look and a proud heart. And the plowing of the wicked is sin. Is what? Is sin. All right, let's go back to uh, Numbers. Where we at in Numbers? Number 16 and 18. 18. Come on. And they took every man's censers and put fire in them and laid incense therein, thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake of Moses and Aaron, saying, mm -hmm. Separate yourselves from among this congregation, Breed. that I may consume them in a moment. He yeah, may consume them in a moment. Come on. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin? And wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? Breed. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the uh, tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and, and, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. From the what? From the tents of these wicked men. Okay, so he said, he said, hold on real quick, because I, I see what happened here. He said, Go. I pray you from the tent of these wicked men. Hold on real quick. I because I, I see what happened. I messed up. Okay. Um Yeah, I messed up bad. Okay, guys, I gotta catch this back up real quick. I'm sorry. Let's go to uh, let's go to Colossians chapter three and verse five. Colossians chapter three and verse five. The book of Colossians chapter three verse five. Uh huh. Mortify therefore you set your members uh -huh. which are upon the earth. Three. Fornication. What is it? Fornication. Three. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Inordinate affection. Three. Evil concupiscence. Three. And covetousness. And what? And covetousness. Three. Which is idolatry. You see that right there? So covetousness, clean it, mortify and clean it up yourself. When you clean up yourself, see what, what happened to those brothers is. Their brothers never cleaned up themselves when they came out of Egypt. So they never really listened to Moses. They never really listened to the commandments that Moses was bringing forth to them. Right. You know what I mean? So they wasn't cleaning. They weren't mortifying themselves. They weren't cleaning themselves up. So that's why they felt a certain type of way. Give me Exodus chapter 14, verse 8. Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 8. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come, don't worry, we're coming right back to those scriptures, guys. Come on. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Read. And he pursued after the children of Israel. So he pursued after the children of Israel. Read. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh. Read. And his horsemen and his armies. And he overtook them in camping by the sea besides fire. Haharath before Baal, Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou and he says, Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of the out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, 
That we may serve the Egyptians. That we may serve the what? That we may serve the Egyptians. Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. So our people was rebellious. They wanted to go back and what? Go back to Egypt. Read. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than which than, than that we should die in the wilderness. Read. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, mm -hmm. which he will show you today. The Egyptians who ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Come on. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forth. Read. But lift up thy but lift up lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea uh -huh. and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Mm -hmm. And I, behold, I harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get, and I will get me honor upon the Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. So you remember when we was reading uh, Numbers 16, 13 through 14, right? What it was talking about, they were saying that they came out of the man with milk and honey. Pharaoh was trying to do what to our people? He was trying to kill them. But they wanted to go back. back. They wanted to go back to Pharaoh. That's how, that's how loony toony we are as a people. Yeah. But they wanted to go back so they could get what? Killed. Keep on reading. Watch this. And the Egyptians, uh, let's see. Verse 23, and the Egyptians pursued and went after them in the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and, and of the cloud. Agreed. And troubles and troubled the host of the Egyptians. So, so this is what I was talking about when I was speaking of uh, that, guy, that he was in the uh, uh, chariots, right? In night, he gave him light, and in the day, he followed him. Watch this, in the host of a cloud. Watch this, read. And took off their chariot wheels, that they drave them heavily. So the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against See, the Egyptians. See, the Lord fighteth for us against the Egyptians, read. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea that the waters may come up again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. Read. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength. When the morning appeared, the Egyptians fled again against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. In the, in the midst of the what? In the midst of the sea. Read. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the hosts of Pharaoh, they came into the sea after them. Three. There remained not so much as one of them. Come on. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. Three. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left So hand. the water was a wall. So they, they it was like a wall right there. So they was walking. They just seeing big, big, big whales go past. You know, you see sharks go past. Octopuses. Look, look. They looking at it like, wow, wow. Look at this thing. And they walking through the midst of the sea, right? So the Egyptians, they pursuing them, right? Come on. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of, of the Egyptians and Israel, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Come on. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did. See, they see the great work that the Lord did, read. Upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord. And the people what? And they, the people feared the Lord <laughs> and believed the Lord and his servants most. Hold on. And, now, hold on. Why, what happened between <laughs> then and now? What happened between Exodus uh, 14 and Numbers for uh, 16, what happened? How did Corium, Moses split the sea right in front of them. They believed Moses did, but all of a sudden, because uh, like they, they couldn't get that fluid when they wanted to, right? They couldn't, well, it, 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 yeah, it was not only that, but you gotta remember the man. Yeah. Uh -huh. They mindset, they mindset was already at the point where they was like, they started learning. Anybody start learning something, all of a sudden, like, 
you get a little kid out there, he start playing football. He start running the football. He start being good. He start, he can't nobody tackle him in his city. He's tough, right? What happens? Now, all of a sudden, he see himself as Herschel Walker. <laughs> or as, uh, give me, uh, 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 what's the, uh, Barry Sanders. Or as, uh, what's the uh, one for Chicago Bears? Herschel Walker. No. Right, right. Now we're talking about football. What the uh, the running back? Uh, Deion Sanders. Well, Emmy Smith. Yeah, Emmy Smith. I'm trying to think of number 34 for the Chicago Bears. I can't walk the paint. Walk the paint. And they start looking at themselves as those great backs, right? Bro, you only in Blue League. You ain't even been outside your city yet. But they the high hopes, the expectation that our people put on these things. That's what happens, and what happened with them? Why by them serving when them coming out of Egypt and walking with Moses and learning under Moses, they felt like they was Moses. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it was in the wilderness for a minute. Yes, so it's a time. It's, it's a time, time period, time. right? This ain't no right. This ain't happened no day or two. Right. They was there for a minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you got so just to let you see that. So let's go back to numbers. All right, Officer George, I am sorry. I did get lost. We already read numbers 10, uh, 16, and I, right here, I got, I'm back on track now. Uh, read 10, uh, number 16, and 10 for me one more time. The so number 10 to 16, verse 10. And he has brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also. Watch this, come on. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. Right. They gathered together against what? Against the Lord. Read. Right. And what is Aaron? That he murmur against. So that's when we back on track now, y'all. So they murmur against Aaron and Moses. Give me first Thessalonians chapter four, verse eight. I'm sorry, guys. I got I got a little ahead of myself. Give me numbers. I mean, uh, First Thessalonians chapter four, verse eight. So they murmured. They murmured against the Lord and Moses and Aaron. Watch this. Book of First Thessalonians chapter four, verse eight. He therefore that despises despises not man. So these these people they went despising man. Read. But God. But who? But God. Read. Who have given us. Who have given unto us his Holy Spirit. So these people despise God. Let's go back to number. They despise God. Let's go back to Numbers chapter 16. Come on. Book of Numbers chapter 16 and verse 12. Three. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the son of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. We will not come what? We will not come up. Give me Psalms chapter 10, verse 2. Watch this. Boy. I'm mad because I read all this. And now I gotta go back. The Psalms chapter 10, verse 2. Watch this. Book of Psalms chapter 10, verse 2. Yes, sir. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Well, see, the wicked in his pride do it persecute the uh the poor. Read. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Read. For the wicked boasts of his heart's desire Read. and blesses the covetous Read. whom the Lord abhors. And who the, whole, uh, who the Lord hateth. Read. Says the wicked through the pride of his countenance. The wicked through the pride of his countenance. Do not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. You see that God is not in all his thoughts. So when we go back and we read it right here, read verse 12 again. Verse 12, and Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram. The sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Read. It is a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that flowed with milk and honey. And see, he said, It's a small thing that thou brought us up out of the land that flowed with milk and honey. Read. To kill us in the wilderness. To kill us in the what? To kill us in the wilderness. Read. Except thou makest that, uh, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over. But now, this is what, so now. Now they try to downplay what Moses have done. You notice that? They try to downplay what Moses done. God had gave Moses power to bring them out of Egypt, but they said, no, read that again, what they say? He says, uh, 
It is a small thing that thou has brought us up out of <laughs> It's a small thing. He'll part the sea. He'll bring all those people, the Egyptians dying. That was a small oh, thing. They didn't play that thing. It's, it's, go ahead. What was you going to say? Go ahead. Hey, hey, Yes, they hate. <laughs> they hate. They right. Like, Today's standards, you you a hater, bro. Like, that ain't that. <laughs> <laughs> right. That ain't that's, that. that's what they say. That ain't that, bro. Would you would do something else, man? <laughs> you know, that's what they were saying. Basically, hold on. Uh, uh, give me uh, Job chapter nine, verse three. Watch it. Job chapter 9. Do I want to start with two? No, three and four. The book of Job chapter 9, verse 3. Watch this. If he will contend with him. If he will contend with him. He cannot answer him. He cannot answer him. One of a thousand. One of a thousand. You cannot. So if you could try to contend with a man of God or a God, you cannot, you're not going to be able to answer one question out of a thousand. Watch this. Read. He is wise in heart. He's wise in heart. And mighty in strength. Read. Who have hardened himself against him. Read. And have prospered. And have what? And have prospered. So he said, who have hardened himself against God and has prospered? This is what our people got to understand. So when Corey and Dankin was going against Moses, they didn't realize who have hardened themselves. And God sent Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses didn't send himself to them. God sent Moses. So right here in Job 9 says, if a man would contend with him, contend with who? Who God sent. He cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is a wise, he's, he is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who have hardened himself against him and have prospered. Let's see the core and to prosper. Let's keep on reading. Verse 14, come on. Verse four, uh, the book of Numbers, chapter sixteen, verse fourteen. Moreover, thou hast not brought us up, uh, brought us into the land that flowed with milk and honey, over, a, over or given us inheritance of the fields and vineyards. Will thou put, uh, will thou put out the eyes of these men? Will thou put out the what? Out the eyes of these men. Then watch this. Give me Exodus chapter two. Give me Exodus chapter two, and I want verse eleven. Thou put the eyes, eyes out of these men. The book of Exodus chapter 2 verse 11. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown. Then he went out unto his brother and looked, and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brothers. And he looked this, and he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man... He slew the Egyptian. He slew the Egyptian. And hit him in the sand. Right. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him, uh, that, and he said to him that did wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he, and he said, Who may be a prince and a judge over us? Who may be a prince and a what? And a judge over us. Hold on, I don't even, I want only down to verse 14. Go ahead. Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the, the Egyptians? So that, that's what they were saying. That's what they were saying to Moses right there. Uh, uh, when he said, will y'all, would you put out the, uh, the eyes of these? Will we not come up if we would not, if we not come, basically, if we would not come up, would you do kill us? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that, let's go back. Uh, let's go back to verse uh, 15, Officer George. Uh, number 16, 15. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. Respect thou not their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. Three. And Moses said unto Kor, Be thou and all thy uh, company before the Lord, thou and, and, and they, and Aaron, tomorrow. And take your Stop, stop, slow down, slow down. Give me Acts chapter 20, verse 33. 
Acts chapter 20, verse 33. Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 20 and verse 33. So he said, and Moses was wroth, and he said, Respect neither their offerings, but I have not taken one ass, neither have I heard it. Now, Acts chapter 20, verse 33. Come on. <coughs> The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 33. Read, and I have coveted no man's silver. I have gold. coveted no man's silver. I have coveted no man's silver. Read. Or gold. Or gold. Or apparel. Or apparel. Read. Is that it? Uh, for 33. That's it. That's all I wanted. So you see that? He said, I ain't covered no man's nothing. I never coveted no man's anything. So watch this. From her, give me Luke, chapter 3, verse 14. The book of Luke, chapter 3 and verse 14. Watch this. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? What shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man. Do no violence to no man. Neither accuse any falsehood. Read. And be content with your own ways. But you see that? So Moses knew the law. So Moses knew that he has not hurt no man. Or have he coveted any man's money or anything from those people? Mm -hmm. That's why he was mad with them. Let's go back. Numbers now, let's go to 16. Book of Numbers chapter 16, verse We're, 16. You can start with uh, 17. I'm sorry. 17 on there. Numbers 16, verse 17. And take every man and censor and, and, and put incense in them and bring ye before the Lord every man his censor. 250 censors. Thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in the moment. Give me Psalms 112 and 1 and 2. So God says, Step away from them so I can consume them. So, so God agreed to put them to what? Put them to death. Put them to death. So now watch this. Read what you got. Psalms 112 and. Yes, sir. 1 and 2. Book of Psalms, chapter 112, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Three. Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The, great, uh, the generations of the upright shall be blessed. So Moses was blessed, y'all. Moses was blessed because God, he spoke to God, and God said to him, what? Separate yourself from these what? Men. So I assume. Were they Israelites? Yeah. But God says, separate yourself from those men because they was in the midst of what? Sin. Sin. What scripture was they breaking? Think about it. Leadership. What scripture was they breaking? They um, bearing false witness. No. What? What else? What? What? Which scripture was they breaking? As far as leadership. Scripture, scripture, scripture. You don't think they hit it back then? First Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. Rebuke not a what? No, the elder. Rebuke not an elder. Mm -hmm. They was re they was trying to rebuke Moses. Moses right. That's where the rebuke not an elder come from. Yeah. These guys were trying to rebuke Moses. But watch this. Inner sister And right. Uh, where was we at? Keep on going. Verse 22. Uh, uh, the book of Numbers 16, verse 22. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh. We almost do it, guys. Go ahead. Man sin, and will thou be wroth with all the congregation? Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the uh, tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of, of Israel followed him. Three. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, 
for the tent of these wicked men and touching nothing of theirs. And when he say the tent of these wicked men, they what? And touching nothing of Touch theirs. Touch nothing of theirs, read. Lest ye be consumed in all their sins. And lest ye be consumed in all their sins. That's why I went to 1 Timothy 5 and 1. We do not an elder read. Come on. Verse 27. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah and Nathan and Nazarim on every side. And Nathan and Nazarim came out and stood in the door of their tent. And their wives, and, and their and their what? And their wives, and their sons, and their little children, and their little children. Hold on, stop right there. Let now we didn't read it, but give me that. Give me that First Timothy chapter five, verse one. We didn't read it, but I gotta go to it now. Book of Verse and Timothy, chapter 5 and 1. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. Uh -huh. And the younger men as a brother. And the younger men as what? And the younger men as a brother. Read. The elder women as mothers, and the younger sisters with all purity. So now watch this. So now go down to Genesis 18, and I want 20 through 24. Watch this. Cause you know you have those that say, I ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. You know how people be like, I ain't doing nothing, bro. Right. I ain't doing nothing wrong. But watch this, read what you got. In the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of, the cry of it, which has come up unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. And, and, and Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Read. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Read. Preventure there be 50 righteous within the city. That means perhaps or suppose there be 50 righteous within the city. Read. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50, uh, for the 50 righteous that are there? Okay, so stop right there. So he said, would you not spur, would, if it be 50 people, would you not spur the, uh, the righteous? So it's back to, let's go back to verse 26. That's, with, that's for Numbers, Numbers 16. 16 26. Read that again. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, for the tents of these wicked men and the touching Nothing of theirs, unless he be consumed in all their sins. So that's why God gave the warning to get away from those wicked people, because I will destroy you mm -hmm. along with them if you're around them. You see that? Right. That's why God said to them, come away from there. Okay? Watch this. From her. Give me, go back to uh, 20s, go to, where was we at? 28? Uh, numbers yeah. 16. Yeah. What was we at? 28? Uh, 20. We went to the end of 27. I believe. Okay, go 28. In verse 28. Moses says, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them my, uh, of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. Read. But if the Lord make a new thing, if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open a mouth and swallow them up, with all the with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, Read. then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Come on, verse thirty one. And it came to pass as he had made an end of his speaking, all these words, the ground cleaved asunder that was up under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertain unto the unto Korah and all their got all their goods. You know what that is today? Those are sinkholes. Mm -hmm. Those are sinkholes today. Mm -hmm. So the same way God swallowed them up, the same way God opened those sinkholes today and swallowed houses, cars, mm -hmm. and businesses, whatever. Yep. He did the same thing back then that he did that he did right now today. I uh from her give me uh Jeremiah chapter two verse thirty three. I right. 
from her. Give me Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 33. Watch this. We all, we wrapping it up. We're going to wrap this up, but watch this. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 33. Yes, sir. Why trimmest thou thy ways? Why you trim your ways? To seek love. Why do our brothers and sisters trim their ways to seek love? Why? That, 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 that says, why trim is thy ways to seek love? Seek love. Why would you seek, why would you trim your ways? You're going to stop doing God's commandments so you can seek someone's liking or someone's, uh, give me some words. Yeah, there are proof. Right. And, there you go. And, and they're going to die too. <laughs> Come on, man. That, that, that don't make sense to me, man. Me they gonna be put to death anyway. But you want them to still like you because read it again, man. The, 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 God, the book of Jeremiah, chapter two, verse thirty-three. Why trimmest thou thy way? Why trimmest thou ways to seek love? To seek love. Come on. Therefore, hast thou also taught the wicked one thy ways? Have you also taught the wicked ones my ways? Read. Verse 34. Also, in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocent. I'm sorry. That's it. Okay. Why right, true is thy ways to seek love? Give me Proverbs 31 30. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Mm -hmm. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now, a woman that feareth the Lord shall. So read it one more time. Book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Favor is deceitful. Favor. That, that favor is going into like, I use it like this. Favor is like you you want somebody to like you. Mm -hmm. You want somebody to do, to uh to uh uh uh, uh accept, accept you. you. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. Somebody to accept you. So it says favor is what deceitful. It's, it's deceitful. Watch this. Hold on real quick. Let me get there. Let me get there. Let me get there. All yeah, right. I'm gonna catch this bus. Okay. I I, I, I ain't gonna keep on having to take it. Okay. Uh, I. Uh, I know it's the last scripture. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it on the way. Okay. I'm coming. That's all I'm Okay, man. All right. I'm going to uh, I'll kind of come on. All right. Appreciate you, man. I love you. All right. Have a Saturday, man. I'm going to do it, man. All right. All right, bro. All right. All right. Come on. Shalom. All right. Read it again. Uh, Book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 30. Three. Favor is deceitful. You say favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain. And beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she, she shall be praised. She shall be praised. So if a person is charm, you know, you you know, favor, favor, you got good charm, and you know, that's cool, right? God said it's okay. It's deceitful though. Mm -hmm. Cause a person can come in, they can charm the hell out of you, right? Oh, yeah, been, been done. To life plenty of time. Okay. So it says, and beauty is vain because you know when this world, that's where we put we 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 focus ourselves around beauty. Yeah. If a if a man or a woman is beautiful, we desire, right. we lust for that beauty. Right, right. Why do we do that? Not knowing that that beauty can have AIDS or monkey pox or the blue waffle. Even syphilis and gonorrhea is, is or crabs. But that intentions to take your bank account. Yeah, account drain account. you. Drain your bank yeah, for your money. Damn, that's heavy. I think yeah. thank you, Officer George. Let's read it again one more time. It says the uh, uh, book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 30. Favor charm is deceitful. Is deceitful. And beauty is vain. And beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord. But a woman, I'm using this as a woman, but I'm also using it as a man. A man or a woman that feareth the Lord? She 
or he shall be praised. She or he, because I'm using it as a man as well, shall be saved. So when you fear God, you can have all the charm you want. Yeah. You can have all the charisma you want. Yeah. You can be that that you can be that person uh, 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 that everybody likes. But if you if you don't fear God, right. it's for not. It's for not. So why trimming those ways? To find somebody like that. Why, why, deceive, why deceive yourself? The, chase after beauty and charm. Mm -hmm. All right, from her, give me a please ask us 19 and 2. Are y'all go? The book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 19, verse 2. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. Read it again. Wine and women. Drinks. Will make men hold of on, understanding. Hold on, hold on, Drinks. You brothers want to invite these girls over your house to have a drink. Wine, liquor. Liquor and what? Says wine and women. Wine and women will make men of understanding. The men of understanding to fall away. Brother, let me tell you something. Y'all brothers and sisters best start listening to counsel. Y'all sitting around here, y'all get these women, and you won't sit around and drink with these women. That'll make you fall away. Because when drinking with a woman, what happens next? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you what happened next. Jump down to verse. It's just a porno woman. Go ahead, keep on reading. Verse, go to verse, yeah, verse two. Read that again. It says, wine and women will make a man of understanding to fall away. Read. And he that cleaveth to harlots. He that cleaveth to harlots. Will become impure. You will become not smart in the scriptures. You will not become smart in in the scripture, scriptures. Three, verse three. Verse three. Moths and worms shall have him to, to heritage. And moths and worms shall have him to heritage. Death. That's what moths and worms are. You buried in there with the worms, and when you die, those moths. Is it really kid? Is it moths and worms? You know what moths is, read. Shall have him to heritage. Read. And a bold man shall be taken away. You see that as death. You sitting around here trying to play play Playboy Jill. Playboy Jill, you can't do that in this truth, man. That's gonna have you taken away. Away. Real talk. My tears. First Corinthians. Chapter 16, verse 15. Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 15. Yes, sir. 16, 15. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus. Hold on. 1 Corinthians, First Corinthians 6 and 15. 6 and 15. <coughs> it's my fault, Officer George. Sorry. Chapter 6 and verse 15. Yes, sir. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an heart? Shall I make, take the members of Christ and make it members of harlots? Read. God forbid. it. Read. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot? He that is joined to a harlot is one body. Stop. When you join to a woman that is a harlot, you a harlot is a hoe. And when you and that hoe becomes one, when y'all have sex, y'all, what do you say? Read that again. He says, Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot? Is one body. It's one body. For two. For two. Saith he. Shall be one flesh. Wow. Wow. 
You gotta worry about it. You gotta worry about her sleeping with everybody around you. Yeah. You gotta worry about her sleeping with everybody. Man. Cause her, her whole eyes on everybody. On everybody. Yeah, she on everybody. She can She can't stop looking. That's what a hoe is. Go to Romans 6 and 7, 6 and 16. Romans 6 and 16. The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. And read. His servants ye are to whom ye obey. Read. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So you better know who you're giving your body to. You better know if you're going to give your body to hoes or you're going to give your body to a righteous woman or a righteous man. Right. Because if you if your body's doing servant as a whole, you're trying to be a righteous man, but you you are sleeping with hoes. You will be put to death with them. Mm -hmm. If you trying to be a righteous woman and you are committing adulteries, you are gonna get put to death with the people that you keep committing adultery with. No, that's what it is. It ain't no. It's no repentance for people that does that. Meaning. You sitting around here, and yeah, I'm not saying that God God is the judge of all things. Let me let me let me get to make make it straight. Let me give me Romans chapter 14. I don't want to say it like that. Let me give me Romans chapter 14. But I'm gonna tell you, do you really want to put your hands in God like that? Meaning, where you can keep your path straight while you out here. And have no worries when you get to the kingdom, right? By keeping your path straight, or do you really want to play with God and get it in sometimes, mm -hmm. and then wait to be judged? Wow, who wants to? Who wants that? I, you up here, you 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 sweating bullets, and that's what they say, sweating bullets. You sweating everywhere. You, oh my God, man, I you. Because you're really gonna be sweating hard if you don't make it. How hard you gonna be sweating? You gonna be sweating so hard that you gonna be burning. Your skin gonna be melting off of you because why? Because you choose not to keep God's laws. But go ahead. What was you gonna say? No, nah, I'm just having a thought. I mean, you know when Christ said, "If your eye uh, sin against thee, pluck it out." You know if you you know if your hand offend thee or whatever, you know chop it off. Yes, sir. I mean, hey. That's, that's, it, that's it right there. That's what you got. That's what we, we got. We got. And it's not talking about your little hand. Right, it's right. talking about your wife. It's talking about your brother. It's talking about your sister. It's talking about anybody that is around you causing you to sin. Yeah. If your wife is sinning, cut off. Cut off. If, if she's in the midst of adultery, she's looking at, she's looking at her, cut it off. Because it, it ain't what? Is it worth it? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Because you know what? You you go you go mess around and lose your salvation because your wife wanna be a hoe. Yeah. If she wanna be a hoe, throw her in the pit with the hoes. That's what you gotta do. Romans 14 and 10. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? Three. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We should stand all in the judgment seat of Christ. Watch this. For it is written. For it is written. As I live, saith the Lord. Come on. Every knee shall bow to me. Every knee shall bow before God. And every tongue shall confess to God. You see that? Every knee is going to bow before God. And every tongue is going to confess before God their sins. So I'm not going to tell you you can't get saved. That's not my job. Right. But I'm going to tell you like this. Go ahead and play with Christ if you want to. And go in front of that judgment seat as a as as a as, as a homosexual. Go in that judgment seat as a pork eater or a catfish eater or an adulterer or a duchess. And, and guess what? Guess what? I guarantee you you won't make it out of that and, and hot grease and fish mm -hmm. grease. I bet you won't make it out of that. Because churches don't, we know churches don't teach. Yeah, we know they, we know they don't, bro. You know, they, they, they don't teach you nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> we almost done. Let's let's get through this real quick, Officer George. Give me Romans chapter eight. 
Give me Romans chapter 8. Let's get through these last couple of scriptures. Romans chapter 8, and I want to start with 35. Because this is the point I want to, this is the, I really was waiting to get to this point, because that, that first point was long. <laughs> I know it, it was hard. I know Officer Joyce don't want to go out and teach tonight. He's like, like I'll read too damn much. I'm only 100. You can't keep on messing with me like this. Let's get, let's get Romans chapter 8, verse 35. This is my big brother. Come on, read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now, this is where I, I really couldn't wait to get to this point. Because some of y'all sisters and brothers need to examine yourself. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Give me uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, please. The book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. You see that? So, so go back, go back to where we was. Uh, is that Romans? Romans eight thirty five. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Who shall separate us from the commandments of God? Read. It says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall uh, tribulation. Shall tribulation oh. separate us from the love of God? Slow down, officer, because we're taking it one at a time. Tribulation. Read that definition right there. This is Merriam West, uh, West Dictionary uh, definition. Says uh, distress. I mean, uh, a tribulation definition. Distress or suffering resulting from oppression or persecution. So. Who's going to, so I, so is tribulation, distress or suffering resulting from oppression or persecution? So are you going to let oppression, being oppressed, are you, you can't pay your bills. Your, your, uh, 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 the man is always on me. Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to let that, are you going to let that stop you right. from keeping God's laws? As we say, I'm catching hell. I'm catching hell. Are you going to let that read the next one? Uh, distress. What is it? Distress. All right, give me one second. Distress. Go ahead. Distress. Hold on. They're number two. Two A. Come on. Pain or suffering. Distress is what? Pain or suffering affecting the body. Affecting the body. A bodily part. A body part. Or the mind. Or the mind. So are so are you gonna let distress? Let me see, because I did I, I thought I seen something else that I wanted. Make sure. Okay, that's good. Read verse, yeah, read that first one right there. That's what I was getting. You go ahead. Okay, uh, to uh, distress, to subject to great strain or difficulty. Uh, or difficulty. Is you going to let diff difficult things? Make you come out the truth. Are you going to let that separate you from God's commandments? All right, let's go to the next one. Persecution. Hold on, real quick. Mm -hmm. All right, definition of persecution. Go ahead. It says the act or practice of persecuting, especially those who differ in origin. They differ in what? Origin. Origin. Religion. Read. 
or social outlook. Read the next one. The condition of being persecuted. His is great. Give you what it is. Harassed. Harassed or annoying. Or someone annoying you. Cause somebody harassing you women. Hey, why you wear a dress? Why you wear a dress? Why come? Hey, damn, you can't you can't do nothing. Damn, you can't go out to the clubs no more. Mm. Damn, you damn, you always gotta wrap your hair when the Bible come out. Damn, see that's 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 a uh, 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 harass and annoying. That's a, that's yeah, annoying as well. Annoying. Somebody harass you and annoying you. You will let them annoy you to the point that you will find yourself. On the other side, go ahead. What you you got? Some come on. Make an excuse. <laughs> you find yourself what? Be the main excuse. You made an excuse to fall out. To fall out. Yep. You start agreeing with people. Well, you know you are right. That is right. Yeah. <laughs> now, now all of a sudden the wicked Next got day. more understanding than you do. Than you do. Damn. All in one day, one day, one read, moment of time. Read, read it again. Start from the beginning. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation. So tribulations. Or distress. Or distress. Hold on real quick. Because I, I got, go ahead. You keep on going. I'm sorry. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution. Or persecutions. Keep on read all night. Or famine. Or famine. Or nakedness. Or nakedness. Or peril. Or sword. Or sword. Hold on, because I'm not. Give me one second. I'm coming. what I needed right here. Give me one second, guys. I'm coming. I'm finishing up. Oh, Lord. I don't think I did that wrong. Give me one second, you guys. All right, I got it now. Man. All right, Officer George, read that definition right there for me. This got a... Uh, persecution. Persecution. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hostility and ill treatment, especially because of race. Race. Or political or religious beliefs. Political or religion... Uh, religion... Religious re beliefs. Go ahead, read some of those. And some of the similars would be oppression. Oppression. Victimization. Victimization. Maltreatment. Uh -huh. Ill treatment. Ill, Ill treatment. Mistreatment. Mistreatment. Abuse. Abuse. Hold on, watch this. Now, discrimination. All right, now what is the definition? Read that definition of discrimination, please. Discrimination is an unjust or prejudicial treatment of different categories of people or things, mm -hmm. especially on the grounds of race, age, or sex. Oh, race, age, or what? Or sex. Or sex. So y'all see that right there. So when persecution, in, in persecution, come discrimination, guys. 
in persecution come discrimination. Mm -hmm. So when, when we are, what, what is the nations doing to us? They, they persecute us. What are they doing? Discriminating against us. The black folks out here that's in Christianity that is in this world, they don't understand this right here. They don't understand that this is happening to them. Right. They no, no, not my white people. No, they wouldn't do me like that. Mm -hmm. But where do you what why are we always marching? Why was Martin Luther King marching? But because of discrimination. Mm -hmm. Because they are uh, not being treated equally, not treated fairly. Well, that, that's part of the things God says going to happen. And when you're not treated fairly, when you're not treated fairly, hold on really, real quick. Jump down. I want you to read this next one right here. Read that. The ability. It says, uh, the ability to, dis to discern what is of high quality, good judgment or taste. You, uh, jump next week. Uh, the, the, ability. the ability to distinguish between different stimuli. See that? So, uh, let me see. Read that right there. Okay. Recognition and understanding. Recognition and understanding. Of the difference between one thing and another. You see that? So when you, when you, when you, when you is getting persecuted, you got to be able to understand, are you getting persecuted for, uh, uh, because of people don't, because of people have a, per, a perpetual hate, or are you getting persecuted because somebody just, you know, they just don't like you or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, they got a perpetual hate against us. And what that it, it bad they don't keep on going after you or knowing you, going after you, keep on doing these things, that can cause you to fall out of the way. Mm -hmm. If you're weak, it'll cause you to fall out of the truth. Mm -hmm. Everybody else got that. All right, we um Luke 9 and 23, officer. We almost done. We're gonna wrap it up. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 23. It says, And he said unto them, he said, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, if any man will come after me. Let him deny himself. Let him deny his own self. Some of y'all got to get this understanding right here. You must deny your lust. You must deny your uh, money hungry, hungry things. You you know, people be money hungry. You got to deny that. You, you got to deny that lust. You got to deny you want to hang out. You, you got to deny you being around a whole lot of different uh, people like you used to be. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta deny that. Watch his read. It says, uh, "If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Take up daily. his cross daily, not not once a week, not, not just on the Sabbath day, but daily. Read and follow and follow Christ. Read verse twenty four. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it." But whosoever shall, shall lose his, uh, will, whosoever will lose his life for my sake, Three. the same shall save it. Three. Verse 25, for what is a man advantage? What is your advantage, Three. If he gain the whole world Three. and lose himself. Come on. Or be cast away. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my word, Three. of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the glory of, of the holy angel. All right, all right. We're going to end it right here. I think Officer George got tired, y'all. I think he got tired. We are TTIC. Thank y'all for joining us today. Sabbath class. I hope y'all got something out of today's Sabbath class. Today's class was not to play with broke, who plays with broken toys. Uh, in parentheses, emotions. 
Don't be emotional, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. This truth is a long walk, and you need brothers and sisters to make this walk. May God be with you. Peace to you, brothers and sisters. With that, we'll say shalom. shalom.